I want to go to my Gulf Coast home Where the pines and palms together sing the songs I used to Tommy. Hi, I'm Tommy Curry. <laughs> I'm Galen Curry. <laughs> I'm Jimmy Curry. Okay, tell me a little bit about where you're from. Jimmy and I grew up out on Cape San Blas and went to school in Port St. Joe. We moved there, interestingly, we moved there from Gainesville. Um, we were here when I was born in Richmond, Virginia, but then we, we, we lived in Gainesville for a few years and moved to the Panhandle when we were very young. And so we grew up in the Panhandle. That was, that was home for the two of us. And it was sort of a, a hub for the Curry family also. My grandfather's from southwest Georgia, our grandfather's from southwest Georgia, and he used to vacation down there. When we were very young, they built a beach house out in that area of the Panhandle, and that became like the hub for family gatherings. Every summer, people would converge in the Panhandle for, for two weeks. So Galen is originally from New York, but um, spent a lot of time in Port St. Joe, because over summers, the spring breaks, the family would get together in that area. So you play the guitar in the group? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, and Galen? I play the bass and sing. Okay. And I play electric guitar and mandolin okay. and sing. But it's we, there's a little bit of, of fluidity there. We, we switch off. Galen plays acoustic guitar on some songs that he's written, and Jimmy will play bass. And we'll switch between electric guitar and mandolin, depending on the song. Mm -hmm. So the inspiration for the songs is coming from all three of you at this point? Yeah, we all say? write. And essentially, the person who sings lead on the songs is the lead songwriter also. It's the harmony aspect of what you all do is just so fantastic. I just can't even hardly figure it out how you <laughs> just came up with such tight harmonies. Copy the Eagles. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when did, when did you realize that one day, as, hey, we, this sounds great, you guys. I mean... We sang together when we were kids. Yeah. And, you know, not with an eye towards doing anything with it, just because it was fun. And we, we come from a family of singers and music appreciators. So we would, you know, on family vacations, we would sit around with a, an old tape recorder and, and make up parts and sing along. We would, you know, pick out the different harmonies in Beach Boys songs. We, you know, we, we just grew up singing together. So it was, um, Galen did music seriously through college. He, he majored in music. Um, Jimmy minored in music. We played together in our spare time, but it was, it was always kind of just a for fun thing. And then... Um, but we had sort of unwittingly developed the skills to s so that when we started playing together in a slightly more serious capacity, we thought, hey, this could work. We, we, you know, we know our way around each other's voices and, yeah. So you're on your third album now, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. How are they different, would you say, the well, three? Well, getting better. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing from my perspective. Not that I don't like all of them. The songs we've written, but you just um, you learn you learn how to write, you learn how to perform the songs that you've written, you learn how to find things to to, to string the songs together, make some some sort of coherent themes, and you learn how to record and produce the songs better. I mean, um, I think that we enjoyed on this last album the opportunity to to experiment a little bit more. So I think that this is maybe a, 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 a bit of a different Curry sound. But ultimately, I think if you, you put one Curry's CD in and then put the next one in, it feels, they all, they all share the same DNA. They sound like mm -hmm. our music. So all our, I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, it's all our voices throughout the entire thing. They're on and we sing on each other's songs all the whole time. So even if the backing music is maybe a little different from one album to the next, the, you know, what draws the ear the most, I think, are the vocals. And so those are still, still us. What would you say about the, the lyrics and the songs that you're composing, though? If there is, is there anything that is significant about the difference in the albums of what you were writing about? Uh, well, and Tommy gave us a, a rule of no love songs. I tried, to put a what? I tried to put a moratorium on love songs for the last album. <laughs> I nearly succeeded. It kind of worked. Yeah. The thing is that, like, I, I, I mean, love, 90% of songs are love songs, and some of my very favorite songs are love songs. Mm -hmm. It's just not the only thing worth writing about, and also I think that sometimes you find your way to a really beautiful love song when you're writing about something else. And you realize that, like, 
love isn't just about like, oh, I'm head over heels or this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. It's about the circumstances of life that lead you to spending time, mm -hmm. to finding companionship. And so like some of the best love songs aren't explicitly love songs, mm -hmm. but the people that feature in them are the people that you have an affinity for, that you're close to, the mm -hmm. family and friends. We write a lot about home. And um, I think that this newest record, This Side of the Glass, was a little bit more intimate, a little bit more political, but none of it in an overt way. Kind of just, these are the things we're thinking about and the, the circumstances we're dwelling on and the people that we care about. And it was a little bit less overtly romantic and more um, filial and intimate. What do you think? Tommy tried to stifle love and it didn't work. <laughs> It'll never work. It's too powerful. It's a primal force and it's going to come through in the songs regardless of what Tommy tries to do to us. There you go. What made you enter the Will McLean Song Contest? What, what did you hear about it that encouraged you to submit to the contest? It was contest? last year at the Folk Festival, uh, the Florida Folk Festival. Uh, Catherine. Catherine, Catherine, Long, Catherine yeah. yeah, friend of ours from uh, Bell in the Band, mm -hmm. and uh, Adventures Band, Adventures Bell in uh, mentioned that she had had won it last year, and she's like, yeah, it's a, it's an awesome thing, and so we knew of the festival, didn't know there's a song contest, but she said you guys should enter, and uh, and so we were she like, yeah, that sounds cool. She specifically heard the song that we submitted, Gulf Coast Home, yeah, was, at the Florida Folk Festival, and she said you guys should submit that to the Florida Song Contest because people would enjoy hearing it at least. So we really, that was it, that was it. And I had talked to Bob Patterson about it on a, at, a, at, at one point and also because he submits like yeah. every year yeah. <laughs> almost because the man is a Florida song machine Yeah. and <laughs> Mark Smith had mentioned it to us. So it was really just three friends. It's also yeah. the, the case that because we are at the Florida Folk Festival every year and I know that there's like obviously a large overlap in artists who play the Folk Festival and play Will McLean. So we have often seen... Uh, or talk to like Frank Lindemood and Grant Peoples and lo lots of our buds from the Greater Tallahassee area and they always tell us like, oh man, sure, that is such a fun time. festival. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about Gulf Coast Home sure. that, you, that you entered. So that song, I, I read on your bio that you did something unique with that to help the Florida Panhandle, right? I don't want to yeah. give away what I, I want you to tell me. What, yeah. what was the story about that? Well, so we had recorded the song as part of, of the recording um, project for the album we released in 2019, This Side of the Glass. We weren't initially sure if we were going to put the song on the album. We were sort of deciding between the collection of songs available. And we were going through final mixes in late September, early October of 2018 when Hurricane Michael hit the panhandle. And made landfall, you know, 10 miles from our house, where my parents still live, and really um, caused quite a lot of damage to Port St. Joe, Mexico Beach, these places that were very near and dear to all of us growing up. And um, we felt a little bit helpless, like we didn't have the the means or the the ability to, to to make to do anything to help but we thought well what if we can maybe we can rush a mix of this song which we're close to done with anyways and put a version of it up on our website for download a sort of pay what you can donation um, raise some money on the back of the song as an early download and donate that to a local disaster relief fund um, in Port St. Joe. So that's what we did. We set it up um, in a couple weeks and shortly after the after the hurricane had landed we had it going and we managed to raise about eight thousand uh, dollars which is a drop in the bucket all things considered but it gave us the opportunity to at least offer a platform for some cohesion and raise a little bit of money to go to go back to you know the sorts of things that um, that people needed in the aftermath of the storm. Yeah, I mean, the trees down was seeing them all snapped in the same the same spot. Yeah, I mean, Panama. It was Panama City Beach was like kind of untouched, but Panama City itself. Panama City, Lynn Haven, all that got yeah. really wrecked. The yeah. Air Force. Wasn't it Mexico Panama. Beach too? Mexico right? Beach, Mexico yeah, Beach. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. Mexico, Mexico Beach will never be the same. 
That I mean that, and that's the amazing thing about it is the distant, the difference between you know eight to ten miles landfall. I mean the the storm landed between Tyndall Air Force Base and Mexico Beach, mm -hmm. and the Air Force Base and Mexico Beach are unrecognizable. I mean some significant percentage of the buildings in Mexico Beach are have just are just gone. Like right. at this point, since they've been cleared, it's just entire blocks that are you can just you used to drive through and it was all these old cottages and old buildings and. Now you get to Western Mexico Beach and you can just see straight to the water. There's no, there's nothing there. It's crazy. Mm. Well, that was a nice gesture that you all did that. It was it, like what Tommy was saying. It's it's crazy when it happens to the place that you know. It, like the most striking part of being there afterwards is we were there right before the hurricane hit, and then we had to go back to Virginia to play some shows up there, and then then we ended up canceling a bunch of shows to come back and play some some kind of free shows in the area just to, to help bring the community back together, kind of, because you know, everyone was dealing with so much stress and, 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 uh, and loss after the hurricane. It was kind of nice to have everyone back in one place, even though it, we played we play this place called the Indian Pass Raw Bar, and it was at the, we played in the, in the parking lot in the back, and the raw bar was completely washed through, and uh, they had like, what, six feet of water or something crazy in there, and uh, but they have a stage out back that was a little bent by the wind, but we, uh, but it still like was standing. So we and they had they got power to just the stage. They shut it off for the whole rest of the place. But so we just sat up there and played, and everyone came kind of out of the woodwork because it, it it felt so different being down there afterwards because all landmarks were changed and like so many trees were down that driving around you didn't quite know where you were. It, it was it was really surreal. Mm. Um, and it, yeah, but. It was nice to take a night <clears throat> off. Everyone was going to have to be dealing with this now for like the yeah. next period of time. So after it happened, the only thing we felt like we could do was cancel some shows and just get down there, and play, play for a week, and be there for people in the evening to blow off some steam, yeah. to drink a beer, to enjoy mm -hmm. some music, to, 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 to complain again. to each other, to talk yeah. to each other, to, to just provide like a hub. And, um, it's easy to feel isolated after something like that. You're cleaning up your own house and you like don't... Yeah, you're just so busy like getting, lost. oh my god, I have to go find out what this thing is, I'm looking for these things, and then like to have, okay, just like say for an hour I'm gonna go down to the raw bar and see everybody and like give everyone, you know, you're just like able to hug and talk and you're like, everyone now is going through the same thing. Some in varying like worse degrees than others, but like everyone understands, you know, what's happening and so I think it's just like nice for people to go be in a community together when when you just feel like your community has been destroyed, you know. It's still the case that there are lots of friends and acquaintances that we have who are not yet in their homes or who have left the town entirely because if you lose your job and your home at the same time and you already have debt, you know, then what are you going to do? You can't it's not that easy to stay. So it's the the area is recovering there you know we love it everybody's doing remarkably well considering it will take a long time to establish like the new normal the way we're able to survive is live performance basically just touring all the time and playing birthday parties <laughs> bar mitzvahs <laughs> you never played bar mitzvah have you? i don't think so <laughs> but we definitely have we, we're, yeah, we're we all going to i want to go to my gulf coast home where the pines and palms forever sing the songs I used to know As I was born, so may I die Beneath this watercolor sky and forever roam